Hello, my name is Sven P, and welcome to Hogwarts in Ark Survival Evolved. For those of you crazy enough to want to build this yourself, you can see a little map here with all the dimensions. This video is sponsored by G Portal. Get 5% off G Portal servers by clicking the link in the description. Let's get started with the building. I start off making the foundations of the entrance to the east wing. In terms you'll understand, the right side of the giant bridge, between the center of each of those two circular towers, there will be 12 blocks in between, which is these square foundations here. So on each tip on that line of 12, there will be those two circles, eventually turning into a tower. Here I'm laying some more foundations, and you can see that from overhead view. If you look at the map and see the number 25 and 22, you can see that the lines attached to those numbers make up a square. Hogwarts is basically based on two squares. The one on the bottom right is a little bit bigger, and that is the one that I'm building right now. And you can say that the length and the width of that square is 25 times 22. Notice how this part here is four blocks wide. What I'm doing right now is just mapping out where I'm gonna eventually put the astronomy tower which is one of the tallest buildings on Hogwarts, and a very iconic part of the series. Right here, I'm gonna build a tiny little arm, sticking out from the foundation of a future tower, and that is so that I'll have a reference point for where the rest of Hogwarts will start. Right here, I will have a little tower, and I want the tower that is right here to be about five blocks distance from the other tower. So now I'm just deleting those blocks that I placed there. I only use them for a reference point. But now that I know where the second smaller square will start, I don't need them anymore. I am of course talking about the square on the top left, that is 7 times 18. This square is called the Quad. In the first movie, after Hermione corrects Ron's pronunciation of Wingardium Leviosa, here in the Quad is where he complains about Hermione, says she is a nightmare, and that is why she doesn't have any friends. Hermione overhears this and goes crying in the bathroom. What I'm making here is the foundations for the clock tower. It's not on the exact same position as it is in the movie, because the nature on this location didn't allow for that, but it's close enough. I will on each of the corners of the quad have a tower, so that is what I'm making the foundations for now. The tower that I'm going to have right here will be the grand staircase tower, which is the huge round tower of Hogwarts. I did make a little oopsie with the foundations here, so I'm gonna replace that later, because it just got way too big. For the next part, I'm gonna map out the Great Hall and the little courtyard outside of it. Notice how I placed the first foundation completely free. It's not gonna really be on the same angle as anything else on the build, so I didn't feel like I needed to connect any of the snapping points to the other parts of the build. And speaking of snapping points, you may notice that these foundations that I'm placing behave quite differently from the original vanilla foundations. These are CKFR blocks, and CKFR is a mod, and that mod I'm using for the structures here. Castles keeps Fort's medieval architecture remastered. You should definitely check it out, link to it will be in the description. Now it is time for the bridge. Notice how I'm just looking carefully to just see the perfect angle that I want to start placing this on. And then I just go straight to building a glorious bridge. The really nice thing about CKF is that you can not only snap foundations on top of each other, you can snap them under each other, which makes bridge building quite a lot easier. So that is part one, which is the foundations, making the little map, setting up for actual building, which is what we will very gloriously be doing now. Starting with the Great Hall. On the outside of the Great Hall, there is a little courtyard, and I'm gonna have that courtyard have a little accent sticking out, which is what I'm building right now, just to make it look a little bit more interesting than just a huge square to have some more complex geometry. And then when I've made the layout, I'll fill it with walls all the way down to the ground. 
This is where Professor Umbridge tries to fire the astronomy teacher and banish her from Hogwarts. Dumbledore, of course, being an absolute alpha, refuses, of course, and sends her back in. And then Umbridge is like, eh. But here's the huge plot twist. This is also where Harry and Malfoy first meet. But how is this possible? Because that was inside, and this is outside. Is it by magic? Maybe. This could also be because in the first movie the castle actually looks quite different from the later movies. And there's a big building there that you can be inside of instead of this courtyard. I looked at quite a lot of different Hogwartses in order to get it right. Hogwarts is a pretty special place to me. I'm a big Harry Potter fan, as I'm sure you can tell. By the amount of magic that I use to bend the YouTube algorithm to my favor. I learned that trick at Hogwarts. What was I saying? I was gonna say something about all the different Hogwarts. Yeah, they changed a lot of the sign during the movies, and the one that I'm making here is closest to the Hogwarts between year 3 and year 6. The last movie had a way bigger courtyard, and there is an extra bridge going across the lake. And as I'm sure it would be really cool to have a great fabulous bridge going across the Valgiero lake over there, I decided not to, and I'm fine with that decision. The mod that I'm using adds three different sets of structures. That will be the settler, the villager, and the castle set. The castle set is the one that I'm using for most of this, but the wooden archways that you can see here, and the railings that I'm placing, are from the villager set. I really like how that wood looks, and it complements the castle set very well. I'm also eventually going to replace the roofs here with the villager roofs. Although I'm sure you really like the orange, you're probably thinking to yourself, Eh, you sure about that, Sven? You sure you sure you wanna do that orange there for Hogwarts? Maybe maybe do something else? Maybe try something else? And yeah, I was planning on painting it, but I decided instead to eventually replace it with the villager roofs. Because the original color for the villager roof looks really good. The Great Hall, which is what I'm building right now, is where everyone meets to eat their dinner and stuff. Where the hat picks their houses, where the headmaster says something important, you know, the important room. With Castle Keep's Forge Medieval Architecture, the windows comes in two pieces. One of them being the window frame and the other being the window itself. So I'm gonna add the windows later in a bulk and just go around and just add everything all over the place on Hogwarts. Also notice how I had different rows on those windows, some of them being long, some of them being short. It is that way on Hogwarts as well, and it gives the build a lot more depth. Part of a problem with building Hogwarts in Arc is that the roofs in CKF are 45 degree angles, and the roofs in Hogwarts are much steeper than 45 degrees. And in Vanilla Arc, the roofs are even less steep. But that's just the roofs, it's still possible to make an amazing looking Hogwarts. And with some creative solutions, it can be a glorious result. I'm gonna finish the Great Hall later, and very methodically and organized, jump over here and make a little wall here. When I build, I often jump a little from here to there. I don't always just finish what I start right away, because I like to feel like I'm building everything at once. It's also a little bit more effective to do it that way. Because if I'm building one building and then adding the details to it, then I might, for example, decide that maybe I made a little mistake and I want to adjust it, and then I have to adjust all the details. Just because another building on the other side of the map made it look a little bit weird in proportion. Also, this way lets me not have to replace my inventory that many times. The foundations for the tower here, I realized I had made way too big. So I replaced them and made it a little bit smaller. So the dimensions for the outer ring will have lengths of 3 and 2, meaning that the ring will be made up of 3 square blocks and 3 triangle blocks, but of course one of those triangles doesn't end up on the outer side, making it only 2 blocks long, which I'm sure you've already noticed because you're not blind.
The grand staircase tower is filled up, especially up high, with small windows like this. I'm very glad that I waited with adding the windows to this. Now I'm only putting the frames there. But the windows, as well as any other block, but maybe especially the windows, because they're see-through, adds an element of lag. And while I'm building this, I'm slowly but surely having lower and lower FPS. Smash like for some sympathy, because that got a little hard eventually, but it was of course worth it. Inside the Great Hall, you can see behind where Dumbledore and the teacher hangs out, there's a big window, and it's also elevated a little bit above the ground. So that little attachment that I added behind here is that part with the window. For some extra fabulousness, the Great Hall needs some extra detail, like some crenellations on the edge of the roof, and some flying buttresses. Hogwarts doesn't really have flying buttresses, I think. But it gives the same feeling, I think, as Hogwarts. To be able to place the flying buttresses, I had to set up some support from the inside to get the walls to snap 90 degrees out. And then I just place pillars down from the ground and it ends up looking really nice. The feeling that Hogwarts conveys to me, which is why I felt like this would fit, is kind of a mix of a cathedral and a castle. Also check out this cool block. Keep rose glass wall. I'm gonna place that as a window here. It's a really nice window, which is one of the features from CKFR. Did I mention that's a really awesome mob? I made this on the left side as well, and just cut that out of the video. If you wanna see a less cut out version of this video, I have one that is two and a half hours long. Some of the parts that I didn't think would be as interesting, I cut out from that for this video here. But if you're gonna build this yourself, it might be worth checking out, or if you just can't get enough of Hogwarts. With pillars and ceilings, you're able to snap either to the middle or to the corners of ceilings, and by using foundations to overlap other blocks, you'll be able to make some interesting more detailed shapes. And I used that to make some towers to put on top of the Great Hall, which looks really cool. There will be three of them in slightly different heights, the one in the middle being a tiny bit taller than the other ones. I'd like to mention, now that it's in our view, that the Quidditch Stadium down there, the link to a video for that is in the description if you want to check that out, as well as Azkaban. The stadium was also made with CKF, and it's made by using the villager walls, just painting them in all different cool awesome colors. If you look at the other Hogwarts video, the one that is two and a half hours long, the chapters will be the same if you want to check that out, so that if there is a specific part of this that you want to look at on the other video, you can just look at the description and there will be timestamps for each chapter. Much like this one, the walkway from the quad to the Great Hall area is cut out here, but it is part of the other video if you want to check that out. So the quad that I'm building now, as you can see, it is not exactly the same looking as in the movies because the ground is not flat here. I spent a lot of time finding the perfect base location for Hogwarts, and of course there wasn't a perfect base location, and it's not possible to terraform in this game, so I had to make do. But I do think that the location that I found there was really good. It is on the bottom right of the map, on the chalk hills. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. You can see the cross on the map right there is where it is. A lot of Hogwarts can be seen as big squares with round towers attached to them. And that is very interesting looking geometry. It's not boring to look at because of the variety of the shapes. So this goes for other castles too, not only Hogwarts. That is very cool to have round towers on edges like this. So 
higher up on these towers it sticks out a little bit and there is windows. I'll add some more detail to this tower later because of the way that my process works. I often start something then go do something else and then come back to this later when I for example have the roof pieces and such equipped. One of the things that is a little bit different from this Hogwarts compared to the original one is that my clock tower, instead of being directly behind the quad, is sort of on the corner instead, because of this hill being at this point. I like this place of having it, I think it looks great. And I don't feel bad that I have to do it a little bit differently, because I'm working with the nature, it looks great. And if someone is gonna complain about that, they are a huge loser. Not that I'm preparing myself for having people say things like that. I think that's kind of a negative outlook on life. But for anyone that wants to comment about something that I did was wrong, just come at me. Come at me. And also... <laughs> no, no, never mind. I'll stop talking about this. Never mind. Uh, let's move on to something else. Like, for example, the clock tower and this little courtyard outside of it. This area was used a lot in the third movie. The clock tower is the area where the hospital wing is. And behind the clock tower there is the courtyard where a lot of important scenes in that movie is filmed. There is also the big crooked bridge coming out from there. But you may have guessed already that that's not gonna be in the same location on my Hogwarts. Because where would the bridge go to? The mountains all the way at the edge of the map? I don't think so. The clock tower has an interesting shape to it. It sort of goes out at the edge, like a, well, it sticks out and then goes up a little bit and then there's the roof and then there's this part over here, which sticks out a little bit in a different direction. And all of those shapes combined makes that tower looks really cool. Notice how my grammar is 100% perfect. Smash like for great grammar. This build, by the way, is almost a year old, but a lot of people ask me for a video like this, where I share my thoughts and cut down the video to a little bit more digestible length. And for those of you extra interested, you could of course watch the other one. I'm thinking of doing this with a couple other videos as well. Minas Tirith, for example, in ARK. Also a couple of the Fortnite videos. But if there is some ARK videos that you think I should do this on, just let me know in the comments below. And I might do a revisiting video like this. Minas Tirith, of course, is happening, and that will be next on the list, at least for art. This part of the build was super satisfying to make due to the different shapes coming together into kind of like a cool interesting design of a building. The whole build of course was really enjoyable to make. As opposed to a lot of other builds this didn't feel particularly repetitive to build because despite it being a lot of blocks and a lot of tall walls the real time consuming part of this build is the planning and making sure everything is right. Because compared to, say, a build like Minas Tirith, it's not really just a circle and then a wall. You actually gotta have this building over here, that building over there. Things has to be a certain size. They have to be a certain length from each other. If they're too far away from each other, it starts looking weird. So everything has to be planned very meticulously. And also all the different angles and shapes makes it a little bit of a brain teaser to build. And the feeling of all of the roof pieces, for example, coming together and ending up looking great. It's why I really enjoy these types of buildings in these types of games. And why I'm super grateful to you guys watching that I'm able to do this as a job. Now that we are far enough into the video where it feels genuine for me to say this, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone. Also special thanks to Mark Jungerman who made this song. Edvard Bolos, who's made a couple of other songs that are also in this video. And Alexander Nakarada, 
All of their music will be linked in the description, so that you can check it out yourself. Make sure you say hi from me, and subscribe to them. So let's talk about these towers here. I'm adding some detail to them, some archways under them, so that the angle looks natural from under them. Also for some extra detail, has some machiculations. Also machiculations I will put all over the roof, so that the buildings will look a lot more interesting. One of the things that's like, I don't really like this, but since we're doing it in ARK and we have to make do with things, is the roofs there. The roof pieces are 45 degree angles, but Hogwarts roof pieces are much steeper. But no one is gonna notice that unless I mention anything about it. The courtyard behind the clock tower will basically be exactly the same design as the one in the front. So let's just snap our fingers and jump to where it's like the other part. You're not missing out on anything because this is made exactly the same way as the other one was made, just a little bit smaller. And also in the longer speed build video, the detailed process of the making of this part will be there. This is where I decided that I wanted to change the color of the roof. All this time I was thinking, let's go orange. Let's make Hogwarts orange again. But now I, I got this sudden feeling that maybe orange wasn't the way to go. So what I did was that I replaced castle keep roofs with villager roofs. That is basically replacing tier 3 with tier 2. And it ended up looking really cool, I thought. What I'm going to make now is the top of the Grand Staircase Tower. Like the other round towers, it gets bigger towards the top, and I'm gonna have it increase size twice. Once for the big ground area on the top, and once more for the roof. Here again the problem of arc roofs being only 45 degree angles are quite visible. But having it be an umbrella like this sort of makes it bigger. And sometimes having something be bigger when they should have been just taller might do the trick. On this level, I'm gonna have some of the triangle roof pieces stick out a little bit. So that there can be some windows going out of the roof. Hogwarts has little sticking out areas on a lot of the roofs this way, which is really cool. And it adds a lot of extra depth and dimension to the roofs and detail. Right here, by the way, you can see that I need support. And I'm just going all the way down and just getting the foundations a little closer to the middle so that there will technically be something under the roof. The way that the support system works in Ark Survival Evolved makes it really easy to get support. For example, in Colon Exiles, this would have been a lot more difficult and I would have had to have a pillar going through the middle of the whole tower. I'm glad it's not like that in Ark. Now we're building the East Wing, which you could almost say is shaped like a cathedral, which is kind of cool. For the front, for some extra depth, I'm doing the same trick with pillars and ceilings and foundations as I did on the Great Hall for those towers. I'm having them overlap the wall in a way that makes the wall have a little bit more depth and look interesting. Then eventually I'll have some of those towers on top of them. I'm looking a little bit over to the other parts of the build to figure out what height I want to have this on. And I decided that the tip of these roofs will be 13 blocks above the foundation on the ground there. And now I know, since I've already mapped this, where all the buildings will go. So I'm just starting from top with the roof, sort of as a frame for the build. 
Same with some of these walls over here. I'll use them as a frame to figure out exactly where everything goes. How tall all the walls will be, where I'll have roofs sticking out, so that eventually I'll be able to just fill things in without having to think about where I'm doing. And I'm doing a mix of double windows and single windows. Double windows being the ones that are extra tall and the single one being the tiny ones. Two blocks in from the outer buildings, there will be a courtyard, which is called the middle courtyard. It will be a little clearer lately how that is a courtyard, but it is the area where Malfoy sits in a little tree and talks about how he betted on how long Harry would last against the dragon like a little... In the first movies, the Transfiguration classroom is somewhere in this area, but also the entrance to Dumbledore's quarters. Something that is a little bit strange considering his quarters are on top of the gigantic round tower that I just made. To make the walkway going around the courtyard look cool, I'm doing basically exactly the same as I did in the other courtyards. Using the CKF villager wooden archway, pillars and fences. And it ends up looking amazing, especially now that there's grass here for a little bit more of a variety and scenery. So now that I've made the courtyard and a lot of those walls here, I'm gonna do the rest of the roof. And this is the part of the build that I sort of think looks like a cathedral. It even looks like a cross when looked at from above, something that is often the case with cathedrals. It feels terrifyingly glorious sometimes to build roofs like this in Ark. Because you don't have to build the walls before you start building the roofs. You can just build the roofs on top of nothing basically, as long as they snap into each other. It's a really fun process. First you gotta place the foundations, and then as long as you have a wall going up, on top of that wall, you can just start with one roof and then just attach all the other roofs to the first roof. And as long as you're above the initial foundation that you made, you can just build wherever you want, without needing much connection to the ground. What also really helps with CKF is that the building pieces can snap next to each other and below each other in a way that the original building pieces can't, the vanilla ones. This right here you could call the left side of the cross. In the real Hogwarts, this will actually be the path where you can go out and get to the greenhouses. Something that I wasn't able to put in this build because I didn't have the space to it. Although that would have been a very nice addition to this build. You could probably definitely see what I mean when I say that this kind of looks like a cathedral. With the roof being sort of layered, First a little roof, and then a wall again, and then another roof over to the top. Cathedrals definitely have that style. And also this little extra thing on the tip of this area here. It's also a kind of tip that you could see on a lot of cathedrals. I'm using this window here again, which looks glorious as always. So I'm making the towers at the entrance by the bridge. I'm filling up the roofs. Also there's another building all the way to the left. That will be the same height and look exactly like the parts that is a little bit further right. I'm adding machiculations and crenellations all over the place for some more detail. And finishing up the top of the towers towards the entrance. Also the two tiny ones that are on top of foundations. 
Now we're at part 5, where I will build a bunch of huge towers. Four of them will look exactly the same, and I'll show you how to make them. Those include the Tower of Ravenclaw, the East Towers, and the Central Tower. The fifth one amongst those would be the Astronomy Tower, and it looks very different from the other ones. I'll get to that one later. Now I'm gonna explain a little bit about my design choices for these ones. For the lower parts of this, I had a little mix of foundations and walls, where the foundations would be on the corners, where the middle of the foundations will be on the corner of the ceilings, making it quite a lot of extra depth to the build, which would look nice. Then in between the foundations, there will be windows, and that was a good starting point for a tower, I think. This was where things got a little bit interesting, because yet again I was faced with the problem of the roof pieces in Ark not being sloped enough, or steep enough. I don't really know how to speak English, so I'm just, you know, making up words sometimes, maybe, I don't know. But you get what I'm saying, I think. So I wanted to make a little bit of a custom roof thing here, where it would be quite sloped, steep, whatever, without really having that come from the roof pieces. So that's how I came up with this design here. With the trick of snapping corners of things to the middle of other things, I was able to make this next part half the distance inwards. And then I can go inside of here and make another half the distance further in, if that makes sense. This way, we are able to make a glorious tower, and this will be the same design as some of the other towers. And it will look really cool, I think, personally. Although it doesn't really look exactly like on actual Hogwarts. But I think that will be impossible to do in Ark Survival Evolved. So I'm happy with the results as they are right now. They look great. So I'm gonna be doing that on those other parts as well. And we'll see that from the overhead view. While it ended up looking glorious, I would say that the two towers right next to each other could have been a little bit further apart. Right now, it's two blocks in between them, but I think it should have been at least four. I didn't correct that on this build, but I did on the next time I made Hogwarts, which was in Fortnite. So it's starting to look like something. It only needs a gigantic astronomy tower. So let's build that. Let's go! One thing that the astronomy tower is filled up with is windows. So as you can see on the very lower part, it is no windows at all and then I start spamming windows like there's no tomorrow. These are going to look extremely cool, especially in the night, if there is light inside of air, which there will be. Also remember that I'm eventually gonna place every single piece of window inside of each of these things here, which is going to be really, really fun and cause an extraordinary amount of lag, but that is okay. As I'm sure you can see, because you're not blind, I'm using roof pieces in order to make the part of the astronomy tower that is sticking out, and they work really nice for that. On the front part, it's sort of flat, and also notice what I'm placing on the corners there, the bottom corners. That's the sloped wall that is upside down, the thing that Ark needs to add to vanilla, but is probably never going to add. Which is really sad, but that is why you need to use CKF for your builds. I'm going to make the same kind of rose window here, but I'm going to have it sort of inside a little cave, for lack of a better word. For some extra depth for the build, which is going to look really cool. Also CKF has half walls, 
which makes it that you can fix adjustment of height like this, which is really nice. This roof suffers as well as the other roofs for lack of steepness, which is why I'm adding that little extra wall there to sort of make it feel a little steeper, which I feel like worked out pretty well. Then I'm just adding the rest of the roofs there, making it into a little circle behind there. The behind there is made up by only triangles, by the way, not a mix of triangles and squares. A mix of triangles of squares, by the way. If you make that attached to a square, you won't be able to attach it properly. So if you're going to have a shape that is like this one in the form that there is a square on one part of it, and then there's the back point, you want it to be sort of round, you have to use only triangles on that part. That part can't have a mix of squares and triangles because it won't add up. Here's an example of the shape that I'm talking about, which I'm going to make into a tower. The little roundness here that is made with triangles and squares is the part... What I'm saying is that the part of the astronomy tower that was made with triangles cannot be made with this shape because it won't add up. These towers will be turrets that are gonna look really cool as an addition to the astronomy tower. That is how Hogwarts in the movie is as well. There is a bunch of turrets. There was a little area here that is supposed to be open. At least in some of the film adaptations, there is an open area here. So I was experimenting with a couple of things, but figured out that I was gonna make this a little wider here, and then eventually add gates, and that would look really cool. It is, by the way, on the astronomy tower, that, you know, I don't want to spoil something for those that hasn't seen, but for those of you that have seen. A lot of stuff happened in the sixth movie. I replaced the initial gates that I used with some bigger ones. The style of this tower was very similar to the other round towers, apart from the way that I used gate to make a very open area. Another difference, of course, is that the bottom is in the air, which means it needs to have a certain kind of bottom, and I don't want it to be completely flat because that looks weird. So I'm gonna use roofs there to make a little spike under, and that will look very cool. Basically an upside down roof. The snapping points behave a little bit strangely here with the roofs. They don't seem to be snapping properly to other roof pieces, so I'm just placing these walls here to have something to connect it to. And that ends up working out. And then I'm placing these ceilings, because that was apparently necessary to place the triangle roof pieces at the bottom. Like most other areas on Hogwarts, I add some railings and stuff on the edges of the roof so that the castle will be a little more detailed looking, look a lot more interesting. And CKF has a lot of options for building things like that. Then I'm adding another turret on the other side. This one will be much thinner and it will be a cool contrast to have one be thick and one be thin like that. The same seems to apply with having to use one triangle ceiling in order to connect the walls to those roofs under there, which is a little bit strange, but that's just how the snapping system seems to be. With that being said, the snapping system in CKF is way better than it is in Vanilla Arc, and all of the problems that are with the snapping system in CKF are there times 100 in Vanilla. What I'm building here is Dumbledore's quarters. On the top of the Grand Staircase Tower, there are three sort of tower things sticking out on top of each other. It looks really cool and is a very characteristic thing of Hogwarts. In the second movie, the entrance to this is actually by the courtyard that I made on the other side of Hogwarts. This might be caused by either two reasons. One being magic, which is the one that I suspect is true. 
The other one being the possibility that the directors changed their mind a little bit here and there with where to have what. Not that I would have a huge problem if it was the second one. Moving over to the other side of Hogwarts, here I'm making the Crooked Bridge. In the movies, this is located in between the Clock Tower and Hagrid's house. I didn't make it right behind the Clock Tower because of the way that my map is and I just had to make my own little creative decisions here and there. Also, the Crooked Bridge that I made is a lot shorter than the ones in the movie. But I figured it would be cool to add anyways, and even though it doesn't look exactly the same, I think it adds a lot to the build. And since I'm about to make Hagrid's house, I think this is a great addition. Also notice how I used one-third sized walls in order to make it different elevation in the ceiling. That's a pretty useful trick to make your builds more interesting looking. With a block called Villager Scaffold Gable, I'm able to make the support that is under the bridge. On the actual Hogwarts, this bridge has a huge support thing like that. Next on the list is Hagrid's house. Hagrid's house is made up of two circles, you could say. One being slightly bigger than the other. In the first two movies, if my memory is correct, Hagrid's house was right next to the castle, and so was the Forbidden Forest. In the ones that came later, they moved Hagrid's house to a little behind the Crooked Bridge, so that when you came from the clock tower, you would cross the Crooked Bridge and then go down a hill, and there would be Hagrid's house. So the version that I made does come from the Crooked Bridge, but the Crooked Bridge doesn't come from the Clock Tower, so it's a little bit different in that sense. Also, my Hagrid's house is a lot closer to Hogwarts than in the later movies. When building Hagrid's house, I wanted the roof to not be completely 45 degrees straight angle, like the other roofs there. Since Hogwarts is a pretty sophisticated looking building, it looks good when something is completely straight. But Hagrid's hut is supposed to look a little simple, for lack of a better word. And then it looks really nice when the roof is a little sloped. So I used a mix of vanilla roofs and CKF roofs. I just painted them eventually in the same color. Because the vanilla roofs does have a different angle from the CKF roof. The vanilla ones are a little less steep. And those two go very well together, actually, for that reason. The snapping points are quite infuriating with vanilla roofs. This triangles has the snapping points on the bottom, but the square vanilla roofs has the snapping points on its sides. So I need to use the sloped half wall in order to be able to place the square roofs, but I don't need to do that for the triangles. That is a kind of strange system, which is part of why I'm pretty frustrated sometimes with the original snapping points. With CKFs, all the roofs snaps normally, not just the triangle ones. The roof is looking really good like this. All it needs is a couple more details, like for example the little awning in the front. It's made by a mix of CKF castle stuff and the villager stuff. And also I'm having a little accent sticking out this way. I tried a couple of different colors, gray, green, but ended up eventually deciding on brown. I'm adding a couple of windows all around the place and it's looking really, really cozy now. But of course, the beige is not quite the right color for Hagrid's house. I'd like it to be kind of dark gray. So I'm just painting this. It's very easy to paint the CKF walls. All of the CKF stuff can be painted. So it's just the color being adjusted to the right one. Some interior added. A furnace. We're done with Hagrid's house and we can move on. In between the two squares of Hogwarts, there are two bridges. 
Notice how I started off this one by just placing a foundation freely. That way I'm able to connect the bridge to both of the towers without actually connecting them. If I were to connect it to either of the towers, it would point in the wrong angle. This is of course not an issue with the other bridge, because it's possible to connect it to both of the walls, because their angle are facing each other. One issue here, however, I had to remove these foundations on the ground here, because it would look weird. But now it was not enough support. What I did was that I just went into ghost mode, and then placed the rest of the foundations under instead of above, so that they wouldn't be visible, but would at the same time give the support that I needed. And then we have two pretty nice looking bridges. And that is pretty much it. I'm adding all of these windows here, which I've talked about earlier, that's gonna be quite time consuming to add all of that and will add to quite a bit of performance issues because these are all see-through and they're all one block so that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to wait with the end for doing this but it's really important and makes the whole build look so much better and so much detailed once they're here so it's worth it and that is it for the building thank you so much for watching so far I'm now gonna show you the time-lapse, including the Quidditch Stadium and the Azkaban Prison, which are both two speed build videos that you can check out through the description if you want. This one was also built with CKF, but mostly used villager walls. The villager walls are the ones that I painted in all of those fabulous colors and it turned out glorious. Here is the Azkaban Prison. This one was actually built with the previous version of CKF, which looks a little bit different. The blocks are a little bit darker, but I thought they were perfect for making Azkaban. Azkaban, as you can see, is a giant triangle, and triangles are perfect for building an arc. Smash like or you'll end up here. Thanks again so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. This pathway up here, actually in actual Hogwarts, goes all the way down to the lake. But the lake is a little bit further away on my build. Also the Quidditch Stadium is actually on the other side of Hogwarts. That doesn't really matter. Here we have arrived at what is called the Viaduct Courtyard. Here is a fantastic view to all the other towers around here. It looks glorious and is one of my favorite parts of the build. I made a tiny little hole here just to go through and get into the Great Hall. You can see on the top here of the Great Hall that I used generators 
because of the blue particles that comes out of them. So across this walkway, we'll be able to get over to the quad, here where Ron called Hermione a nightmare for correcting his Vincardium Ladiosa. I made some of the interior for Hogwarts, like for example this little hallway here, and some other rooms here and there. I also added a little tree here. This is the courtyard behind the clock tower. And here's an overhead view, just spinning around the whole thing. It is of course from these angles that the build looks the most glorious. I also made the staircase room, sort of. I didn't put too much time into this, but I just wanted to have it there, just to have it. Here's a bridge that takes you from one square to the other. I added a bunch of trees as well for some liveliness. Here's a little bit more interior, and you can go out here and cross the bridge over to get to Hagrid's house. Here is of course Buckbeak, about to get, you know, not gonna spoil anything. And I made a little bit of interior in Hagrid's house. Not much, but enough to make it look like I made a little bit of an effort. Buckbeak, you gotta get moving. Come on, come on. There we go. Let's go! Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. It took me quite a bit to make this build there and make this video, and it was definitely worth it. I really appreciate so much all the positive feedback and everything. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Make sure you check out some of my other epic, ultimate craziness videos, some of which should be on the screen right now.